Well, hello again. This is Rob Wagater, and I wanted to continue our discussion around Azure Site Recovery for the Azure in 5 Minutes web series. So I've already shown you how to enable Azure Site Recovery from a Azure perspective and then how to set up a VM to be replicated. What I want to do today is actually show you, once the VM is replicated, the things you can do with it. So I've moved to my Recovery Services and then my TS2 Recovery Site Vault. Under Protected Items, my Protection Groups, I can see my TS2 settings and then the actual virtual machines. I have a number of virtual machines set up here and some of them are in error status because I continue to try different things for you. And so we'll talk about some of those or some of my learnings from those. But the first thing I want to point out is I have an error. So I have error details when it comes to this virtual machine and this is one we're going to work with today. When I pop open error details it tells me that more than 20% of my replication cycles haven't been successful. What I actually did right before I started recording was actually pause replication for a while and then re-enabled it so we could generate this error for you. So you can see that here if you move back over to Hyper-V we can go to view replication health and see it here as well. So this will tell you what's going on. The good news is is it tells us when our last synchronization occurred. That was just now. So I'm up to date from my replication. Just some of the prior replicas didn't occur. But keep in mind that everything in Azure is now in sync with on-premises and we'll show that to you. So I'm going to move into this virtual machine. I have my E drive and I put a file there and my local disk. The other thing I'm going to do is create a text file right now and save this on the desktop. My replication interval is set for 30 seconds. By the time we move over to Azure, this will have already replicated. But I'm going to close this because I've made a change to my desktop here. I'm going to move back to my Azure portal. And now what I'm going to do is create a test failover. So a test failover lets us sandbox this virtual machine in Azure. The production VM continues to run. We're going to put a copy of that VM running in a sandbox in Azure so that you can spin it up and inspect it without impacting runtime. So I'm going to start the test failover and the neat part about this is when you say test failover it asks you which virtual network or none. I've created two virtual networks, TS2 VN, which is a virtual network that I've built on for this whole series. That's my production portion of the network in Azure. TS2 test failover is a sandboxed virtual network, which is where I'm going to spin up this VM. So I check the box here and it's going to start the test failover process. I'm going to pause the recording here until the test failover works. Then I'm going to come back to you and show you what test failover gives us. Okay, now we're back and the test failover has progressed, so let me show you where we are. Test failover is in progress, and if we move down here, we can view the job. It's pretty important to keep an eye on this job, and you'll see what's happened. So we created the test environment and the VM. We started the VM, and now it's waiting for user input. If we move back over here, we can go into the VMs, and we'll now see two VMs where we had originally only seen one. This new WK3-test. So we hyphenate test just like we do with an on-premises Hyper-V replica test failover. Now something I want to share with you here, let's close this, the connect button is dim. We can't RDP to this VM the way it is. If we drill into this and we look at endpoints, no endpoints have been enabled for this VM. So you have to add an endpoint. You have to add RDP if that's what you want. Please don't pick public port 3389. I always try to randomize it a little bit and then check the mark and it'll do this update which will take just a minute when it's done I'll come back to you again okay so the RDP port has been added now we can move back to the VM and RDP to it so now the connect button works and we can now RDP to this Azure running virtual machine okay so we're in the VM in the test failover notice the name on RDP WK3-test and we have one red error in our server manager. That tells us that there was a Microsoft Windows kernel power issue. What that really is is the snapshot replica that we're running off of wasn't notified that the VM had been shut down because this VM never went through an orderly shutdown because we're do doing these snapshots and replicas. So it thinks it lost power when it was being brought back up. Not a big deal here so don't worry about that. What I do want to point out though is the document Rob was here that I created is here an IP config and we have our IP address. The other thing I want to show you is there's no E drive here. The reason for that is if we go into disk manager 
we'll see that this disk is offline by default. So one thing you need to do, and I'll add this to the blog as well so you can come back and look at it, is you need to start disk part. And we don't want to do this on the replica. We actually want to do this on the original VM. So I've got this replica and test failover, right? But here's the original VM. And so when I start this and bring up disk part, we need to set one policy in disk part, and it's a SAN policy. So it's SAN policy equals online all. That will tell the VM from now on, tell Windows to always bring those disks up. So if you do this on your on-premises image, not the replica, because anything we're doing in the replica or that test failover is going to be thrown away when we're done, which means policies won't replicate, right? So we need to do this back on the original. So let me move back here to the console. We have these two VMs now. The other thing we have to do is move back over to Recovery Services and into Jobs. You'll see this current job, Test Failover, waiting for action. We can drill into it and it'll tell you all the steps. It's waiting for us to say Complete Test. We can Complete Test or Cancel the Test. I'm going to go ahead and say Complete Test. We check this box and then we let that work. I'll come back to you in a minute. Okay, so our test failover has completed. The thing I like about this is this note screen. We could even go in here to notes and make additional comments if we want to and save those off. The great part is, is you can go back and review those notes for many of your prior test failovers. The other thing I want to point out is if you move back to virtual machines, you'll see that that test VM was done. So just like test failover with Hyper-V Replica, test failover in Azure will go clean up everything when it's done. Sometimes this takes a minute, so be patient, but Azure will come back and clean up that virtual machine. Keep in mind, a test failover says we're going to create a new snapshot of the VM, spin it up, let you log into it, and inspect it. This is a read-only version. Any changes you make get deleted once the test failover is done. You're not working with production. You're working with a sandboxed copy. If what you want to do is move that virtual machine from on-premises to Azure, that's when you do a failover. And in my next section, I'll talk about doing the failover instead of test failover. But for now, thanks for joining me, and I wish you well.